party, an online birthday party. And I created it in a way that everyone was invited and I did send gifts out to everyone and I made it very mysterious and I told everyone to buy a sparkling uh, wine or some whatever, something sparkle and some cake. And then at some point we all opened up our uh, gifts and at some point we had all together the sparkling wine and we had like two, a two hour call on Zoom, which was just fabulous. We had really a lot of fun. So I don't drink much alcohol, but I remember that one time that I really enjoyed sparkling wine. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And you've highlighted, so for me, uh, Sante, which is the name of this uh, well-being program or approach to well-being that I'd like to create, that not only honors my heritage, being French and from the Champagne region, but also what Champagne symbolizes. And for me, it's three things. And the first thing is celebration. But it's also the fact that generally we have champagne with others. So there's a, a sense of connection and community. And then for me, there's also the question, I don't know if you've ever seen maybe a couple in a restaurant having champagne. And then you're curious as to why they're doing that. And for me, curiosity then is also important. Also around, you know, why is it that uh, champagne is different to maybe a Prosecco? Why is it that a certain culture does, you know, there's some cultures who don't drink any alcohol. It doesn't mean that they don't celebrate. And in fact, Sabine, thank you for mentioning that you don't drink a lot of alcohol because Santé and this program or this approach is definitely not about promoting drinking more. I mean, if anything, we should be drinking less. And one of the guidelines that I generally share with my groups is to drink, to rather go for quality than quantity when it comes to alcohol. I guess the same applies for, for food too. And also to drink with a sense of awareness and to rather have less than, than more. So talking about alcohol and uh, guidelines and things, then this is, um, you, we're all in charge of ourselves. So if I ask you to make a comment or try or something, please do if you want to and don't if you don't. So you're in charge of you. Um, I'd like to know, thank you, Sabine, for nudging me to record the session because I actually had meant to do that. <laughs> if there's anybody who would not want me to share the session, um, then just let me know and then I won't at all. And um, yeah, I think before I end off the session, I'm gonna ask you or share some ideas of how I feel this could become more than just a once off half an hour chat. Cause I'm, I'm already touched by the diversity of the amount of people that have connected. But what I'd like to do is build on the idea of celebration and not just look at your earliest memory or like I shared around mine, being, I mean, I remember when I went to France on my first birthday, my parents took me back to France to be baptized. And I've got photographs of me sitting right next to this champagne tower and one of my favorite French cakes. <laughs> so they were having champagne then. And celebrating doesn't have to be big things like baptisms or 50th birthdays. It's because it's so beneficial to be in a state of celebration. We know that when we're celebrating, we're generally feeling good and feeling positive. We might even feel a bit grateful. And that sends really cool messages from, from the heart, the brain, and the rest of the body. It reduces blood pressure and reduces the effects of stress and cortisol. And uh, because it's the end of a busy week, I don't want to get too detailed around it. But we know there's a lot of science to show that even, even just a moment, you know, a minute of being in a state of celebration or gratitude or happiness and joy can have really lasting benefits um, in terms of your health and well-being. And when we see as much burnout and mental health issues, I think the more we can get uh, to help and reduce that, the better. So is there something from this week that some of you would like to celebrate? And it really doesn't have to be a big thing like a birthday or an anniversary. I know, I know Tom mentioned he was the first one on the call. And Tom, you seem very excited to share something. Are, are, are you happy to share it with the group? It happened five minutes ago before we started the call. It happened five minutes before. Yes, yeah, so I was li in live celebration mode. I, I, in Plattenberg <laughs> in South Africa that you know very well, yes. 14 years ago, I started writing a book. And um, I, 15 other books got in the way. And five, five minutes before five today, I finally submitted the audiobook version of it up for approval. The print version's up this week as well. But the book I started 15 books ago and about 15 years ago is going out to the world right now. And I'm celebrating that. So there you go. Well, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and um, well done. Yeah, for those of you who don't know Tom, Tom um, 
well, I had the privilege of being coached by Tom for a year and Tom has got some incredible insights around living a more mindful life. Um, so what I would like to do is before we end of the call is suggest um, I've created a Facebook group and anybody who I'd like to keep it closed. So it's not an open Facebook platform where anybody can go. Ideally, you must have attended one of these champagne uh, cafe type conversations. And if you'd like to then connect with each other and I will maybe once or twice a week share a thought around the, the concepts of celebration, connection, community, curiosity, share an idea or a link between the champagne making process and well-being and we can just remind each other to celebrate and also find a place where we can celebrate the big and the small things so thank you tom would anybody else like to celebrate something from this week uh, if i may go uh, i i think you already know uh, Celine, but um, i've kind of started my process of finding a way back to living and working in england around you know my parents getting older and being there for them more um, and I had a, a pretty positive interview this week with a company in Bristol. Um, and then they're, they're moving through to the next step. So yeah, that's, uh, I think that's something that's worth celebrating. It's been a, been a process to get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. That's also quite a big thing. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank oh, you. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have something perhaps, um, well, let me not qualify it. Well, I may go. Yes. Well, I met the love of my life a few months ago and um, we have had a very long period where we did not see each other actually and we met in Italy once and then he came to visit me and now I'm the first time here in Barcelona with him <laughs> and it's really nice because it's kind of living together for two weeks and it, it's just great because we're laughing a lot so there's a lot of uh, little mini moments of celebration. Yes. And I think that is a sign for a very healthy um, relationship when you can laugh together. So. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Well, That's that, lovely. Yeah, that is lovely. And it, it also feels like a big celebration. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I was single for seven years, so I think I have something to celebrate. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You wanted to add in a comment, Tom? Yeah, just, and, and what a lovely smile you have. So it's great that it's coming out a lot more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I like to laugh a lot. <laughs> That's true. And thank you, Tom, for that. Because uh, sometimes if we don't have something that we feel we could celebrate, by simply paying it forward and doing something for somebody else. So the concept of, I'm sure that you're aware of random acts of kindness. The idea of doing something, even if it's remarkably small for somebody else, even if it's a random stranger without them knowing or doing it to get anything back can definitely give you a similar feeling and then the health benefits as genuinely celebrating. So has anybody done a random act of kindness this week that they would like to share? Hmm. Yes, Philip. Yeah, I joined the call a bit late, guys, so forgive me. I was stuck in traffic and had to pull over to a lay-by to join you all. Thank um, you for doing that. Thank you. So a random act of kindness. I mentioned this to you, I think, in the week, but I was coming back from a mindfulness course that I had attended, and I was crossing a small toll bridge on the outskirts of, to of Oxford. And uh, I got my 10p out. It's only 5p to cross this old bridge. And when I gave it to the guy, he said, oh, the guy in front of you has already paid for you. Wow. And I thought, how oh, wonderful. It was such a small thing. And then I put my 10p back in my wallet and I drove on. <laughs> and then I noticed, oh, why didn't I pay for the guys behind me? <laughs> and it wasn't a conscious that I didn't. I just in that moment hadn't consciously thought I couldn't. And then I find myself later in the week through a weird act that I, I didn't understand at the time. I was rerouted by Google Maps on the normal route I use, and I found myself crossing the same bridge. So this time, I paid for two people behind me. Uh, oh, it's amazing. Lovely. That's worth celebrating. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's lovely. Yep. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll add one more in, which isn't me, but sometimes I think 
hearing about what others do can inspire. Um, and I saw something on my local television after the news uh, on BBC a couple of nights ago where a guy had decided to raise money for a close friend of his who was dying of prostate cancer. They caught the cancer too late to save him um, and he decided to raise money for it. So, <laughs> oh gosh, extraordinary. This guy decided to run a marathon in every country on the earth. Mm. All 196 countries. Wow. And he was on television having just flown back from Athens the day before, where not only did he complete his 196th marathon, but the guy he thought would survive long enough to see it all completed was still alive and ran the last mile with him. And there was this oh, wonderful wow. photo of these two guys crossing the line with tears streaming down their face. And I thought that was worth celebrating because it celebrates what the human spirit can do. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put that out there as a worth yeah. celebrating. Thank you. Indeed. Indeed. Beautiful. Because we certainly don't have um, a shortage of thing of reasons why not to celebrate. I mean, you only have to jump onto Twitter or the news. And we don't often spend enough time, I think, sharing these kind of stories. And sometimes when we look at stories around celebrating, they can also appear. I mean, I love that story, Philip. But I, I mean, it's, it's a huge feat. It's a magnificent achievement. But for some people, it might seem like, oh, well, I could never do something you know, as big as that. And uh, yeah. I, I know, Tom, you have a glass of champagne with you, but I don't know if you can see my, my glass or see the bubbles. What's, by the way, yeah. you, you may know this or you may not, but the one thing that makes champagne different to a Prosecco or a regular sparkling wine, if the champagne has been made in the, the Métaux Traditionnel, um, there's a second fermentation. So they first create the wine, which is fermented, then they do the blending, which is a highly magical alchemical process, a bit like orchestrating music. It's incredible what goes into that and the amount of chemistry and people involved. And then what happens is there's a little dosage. It's a, it's a small amount of yeast, wine, and sometimes sugar. Some organic farms tend to not always want to put the sugar in, but uh, generally the a lot, a lot of the best champagnes will add a little bit of sugar. And that's also a story around adding something sweet into, into ourselves. And it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. And then it gets captured in the bottle because the bottle gets a cap on top of it. And then the bottle has to go and rest a minimum of 15 months. But often in champagne, they do it for three years. So there's another link to well-being is that if we want to sparkle and stay effervescent, rest is important. <laughs> but maybe that can be a topic for, for another champagne chat. Uh, when, when they then, so the, the yeast will break down and cause some carbonic acid um, uh, and, and the, the gas bu bubbles can't go anywhere. So they get trapped in the bottle. They then, through a different process, it's called degorgement, they release the top of uh, the, the excess lease, which is the dead yeast cells. And then they put in the champagne cork, which is how we buy champagne. And then actually there is no sparkle in the champagne yet. It's only when you pop the cork and actually pour the champagne to share it, that then the sparkle is there. And you'll see how the little bubbles almost create this contagious, um, I always say that it's hard to overdrink champagne because of all the drama going on in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> and then depending on the type of glass you use, you've got a different configuration of bubbles. But the idea is that they, they're little tiny things that cause us so much joy and they're quite contagious. And, the little bubble that starts will create many others. I went on a champagne course once where the lady said, I think there's 1 million bubbles that get released every minute or something in a champagne glass. I'm going to have to look that up again. But the idea is that it's really the small things and they start with bringing in little dosages of sweetness into our lives. Mm. And for me, that relates to food. So even though I'm a dietitian, many of you who know me well know that... <coughs> I'm not a dietitian that is completely sugar-free or extreme, that actually by keeping in some sweetness, be it maybe chocolate or champagne occasionally, can actually help you live a balanced life for longer. Mm -hmm. So then the question I'd like you to think about um, is, have you got enough sweetness in your life? So if you think of this week, wherever you've been and come from, I was in South Africa and I traveled back. 
has there been enough little dosages of sweetness in your life? So sense into that. Perhaps it's a personal question. I can. Well, Sabine looks like she's answered <laughs> yes to herself. <laughs> That's because you're with your new love. <laughs> 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 and then the, the next question is. Um, so, uh, Steve introduced me to the embodiment facilitation coaching course, which I did um, two years ago. And one of the key things that they taught us uh, in terms of becoming connected to your body is to be able to ask yourself, how am I and how would I like to be? So reflecting on whether there's enough sweetness in your life and uh, how that relates to feeling a sense of joy or happiness, maybe a sense of effervescence. Then the next question is, um, how, how would you like to be? Would you like your life to be sweeter? Because you may be happy with the way it is. So how would you like your life to be? If you look at the past week and have there been enough moments of sweetness and opportunities for you to celebrate? And is there anybody who would like to share what they're thinking and feeling around that? Well, uh, oh, Philip, go on, go on. No, I was, I was just going to say that I, I, um, I've just filled up with petrol, having come from a, a meeting in Oxford. And I've had a, a good week, a, a rich week. But I noticed the, the woman behind the till in the petrol station looked tired and I overheard her talking to somebody else uh, ahead of me that she got pain in her back. And um, I quickly looked around the shop and I found something that I could praise her for. And her face lit up. And I, I just sometimes think that being able to offer little, you talked about random acts of kindness, but random acts of praise, particularly mm. to service people, you know, if you're working in a petrol station or a shop or a or just pick out something about that person or the way they've done something. So it's, it's something they could replicate or, or um, uh, do again. Uh, it made me feel great and it lit her up. And between us, we had this little, little spark, this yeah. little bubble took a champagne of, um, of kind of human celebration or it was that little moment of almost intimacy between. And I think to do that sometimes is, is, is a great way of celebrating being human. Indeed. Yeah. Sabine, we have time for you to share if you'd like to. Thank well, you. I just, I just wanted to say that um, what I can see is, yeah, it's true. I'm here at the moment in Barcelona. And of course, there are a lot of moments where um, uh, I connect with my partner and they're very sweet and we're two very hard driven people but I can also see that uh, we are in the middle of a startup um, here and there are tons of work to do mm -hmm. and it is so easy to kind of get into that treadmill of oh god I have to do this and this and this and this and this and then kind of forget to sometimes just pause and reconnect with myself or also um, with him in that case, no. Mm -hmm. So I, for example, know that it. Um, I have a ritual that I do uh, at home. So I have a little prayer, and then I do a meditation, and then I do some um, exercising. And all together with breakfast and everything, it's like two hours in the morning, which is a long thing to do. But when I do it, I find it very, very helpful for the rest of the day, and I feel focused and I feel centered, and um, I have the feeling that I can give the best also to my clients. Mm. And uh, it is, but I'm a very uh, empathic person. So what happens when I'm with other people, it, I fall easily into the rhythms of other people. And then I don't do what actually is good for me. Yeah. And, uh, and then I get uh, kind of off tune with myself. <laughs> so, uh, and I think it's really important to find, in my case, what worked was kind of having a ritual that I can stick to that kind of reminds me to come back to that connection with myself. And when I don't have that, I can feel that I'm not so well connected also with the others around. That's lovely. And 
um, the idea of having a ritual is incredibly useful for anything really, not just maintaining a celebratory effervescent state or remembering to put ourselves first. Um, rituals can be very powerful to help us when we're busy because it isn't easy to change behavior. If it was easy, then everybody would be healthy, happy, wealthy, <laughs> and, and slim, <laughs> um, but it isn't. Yeah, so one of the things I wanted to share, because I gave it thought, because the last question I want to ask you to think about is, if we are to meet again next week, Friday, we won't, because I'll be in Davos actually at a conference, but I will be back online doing this in two weeks time. So let's say in two weeks time, is there something that you would like to celebrate then? And by thinking ahead, because now we've considered the past, um, what we have celebrated and remember from quite, you know, perhaps a longer term past to currently this week. Um, some of you shared actually almost presently in the moment, like Tom, what you were celebrating. But when we think about the future, it's almost like we're telling ourselves, well, we're intending to celebrate this particular thing. And that can be incredibly powerful. Uh, I've been doing a meditation course using uh, Joe Dispenza's approach. And that is all about actually visualizing a type of behavior or future or outcome that you want and attaching it to an elevated emotion of joy or gratitude. And I'm not saying that it will create it, but it can mm. certainly help you to shift your reality. And I know between Sabine and Tom, you don't know each other's strengths but you would totally agree that you can mold your realities and your futures by doing that. Mm. So is there something, would somebody like to share one thing that you'd like to maybe commit to in front of us that you'd like to be celebrating uh, in two weeks time on a Friday? Should we all get together again? I'd make an offer to everyone on this call. Thank you, Tom. That I will do um, something for each person on this call that will only take me 60 seconds, but make, the, the, the next week or something. So if everyone can think of something I could do, you don't know me from Adam, something I could do for you that would only take me 60 seconds that would really make your week. And as a result of that, and imagine then if we all did that for each other, then we'd really have something amazing to celebrate because you brought these random people together today. Okay, and then can I suggest that, can we use the Facebook group that I've created in order to yeah. share that with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because okay. yeah, I know I can't make it two weeks' time as it happens, but there's, there's no reason we can't celebrate virtually. Absolutely. You're quite right. Yeah. And because I'm the hostess, I can do this. What I'd like to pledge is, mm -hmm. and some of you are going to hold me accountable to this because I know you're going to ask me, when I get asked how I am, how are you? Because that's generally when we greet each other. Hi. How, how, how are you? I want to initially respond telling the person something that I'm cel celebrating or what I'm grateful for. So instead of launching into, oh, I'm quite tired or, oh, I've been busy, I, I, I would like to, almost as if I'm going to visualize having this glass of champagne and saying, hi, I'm toasting or celebrating X, and then carry on with the conversation and ask them how they are. So, yeah, the ritual and the anchor, Sabine, for me, is the person asking me how I am. And um, yeah, I'd like to be able to report back when I see you that I've done that at least half the time. That's the <laughs> <my pleasure. laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much, really from the bottom of my heart. Um, I know that some of you know how much uh, Santé means to me. And I really would like this, I mean, I'm, I didn't know if there would just be two of us on the call or three of us. And the fact that we are 10 is lovely. And if we can get this community to grow, I would absolutely love that. But to do that, I, I kind of need your help. And the way that I can suggest that we do that is to connect on uh, a Facebook group, because I know that if we just leave it to the, the cybersphere of the greater social media, it can sometimes get lost. And if you have any ideas um, or requests or um, insights, I would really value them. So I think you all know how to get hold of me. So I'd really like you to do that. And then to end off, I'd like to say santé. I'm assuming that you know it. Santé means to your, it means good, it means health in French. It also means cheers. 
And whether you're cheersing with a glass of sparkling water or tea or virtually because you're driving. Um, yeah, perhaps as we close the call, think about what is the one thing that you'd like to be celebrating when we next connect. Sante. 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 And good for the first one, Celine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Celine. It's great Thank to get it off the Thank ground. Thank you, Celine. Huh? Have a great weekend. Thank you, you too. Thank you, Celine. Bye, Rebella. Bye, Philip. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Hi, Jamie. She's been quiet. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Celine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Celine. <laughs> see you in the other chat. I'll see you now. Thanks, Sabine. Yeah. Bye-bye. I'm going to close off the meeting. Celine is... Mr. Avery.